Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video I'm going to explain how we first teach children about rounding. I'm going to cover rounding to the nearest hundred, the nearest ten and the nearest whole number and I'm going to use the visual structure of the number line to support thinking. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the conceptual barriers children face as they get to grips with rounding and how we can overcome those barriers and ensure they develop really deep understanding of what they're doing. This is the last video in this series. The one topic I haven't really covered here that I possibly should have done is factors and primes and that will be covered in the first episode of the next series which should go live within a couple of weeks. And when that's ready I'll place a skip link to it here in case you don't need this episode on rounding. The video which covers the mathematical elements that lead into this topic is the one on the foundations of decimals. So if you need to watch that one first, here's a link to it now. OK, let's get started. So first of all, with our number line, let's count in tens. Zero, ten, and that's a hundred. And we can fill in the rest of the numbers or imagine them if we know this sequence well. Then if we're rounding to the nearest 10, all we have to do is position a number fairly correctly on this number line and see which 10 it's closest to. So if we took the number 63, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, a child needs to understand that 63 is going to be about there and it's going to be closer to 60 than 70. Therefore, when we're rounding to the nearest 10, these are the 10s and 60 is the one that 63 is nearest to. So the answer is 60. So if you've got a child who is struggling to place a number on a number line like this, it's really helpful if you zoom in on this problem and really work on it. You might want to do lots of work on a number line like this that really brings it into focus. You might want to work with the bead string again to help the child see the tens as the colour changes. Sometimes it's useful to work with blank strips of paper and just say we've got zero at that end and 100 at that end. Show me where 47 is and see if the child understands that it needs to be a little below halfway and have conversations with them if they don't that help to bring that into focus. When I'm working with whole classes of children, I often give them either blank strips of paper or strips of paper that are marked into 10 sections. I tell them what numbers at that end of the strip and what numbers at this end of the strip and I ask them to position a number with a paper clip. And that enables me to see the thinking of every child in the class at the same time because I can see all of those answers together and then I know who needs help. So gradually children need to be able to position numbers and to see which 10 they're closest to. And when we've worked between 0 and 100, we can shift this number line. So we might work from 300 to 400 and we might ask to round 319 to the nearest 10. So the child needs to know that 319 is, is about there and they need to be able to see that that's 320. If they can't see that, you need to hone in on it precisely what it is they can't see and work with them on that. Now, of course, there's an ambiguity with the number five. If we were looking, say, at rounding the number 335 to the nearest 10, that would be about here. And we need to have a really honest discussion with children about the fact that it's halfway. It could equally go either way but we have a convention that if it's halfway you round up because we like to be generous or just because we've decided that that's the way we're going to organize numbers so that people can make a decision. A lot of people say you round up when the number ends in five that sometimes causes problems if the number's a decimal number and I'll come back to that later so it's much better if children are thinking about steps and the positioning of numbers and the fact that if a number is in the middle we've decided through history and through convention that we round up. Okay what about rounding to the nearest hundred? 
So if I set our number line up to count between 0 and 1000, counting in steps of 100, we could mark those on if we wanted to. A child needs to be able to position a number to 1000 approximately on that number line. And they need to be able to see which 100 it's closest to. And they need to know that if that number ends in 50, it's going to be bang in the middle of a step. And by convention, we round up. Finally, let's have a look at rounding to the nearest whole number. So if I make that one and this 10 on this decimal number line, then the larger steps are ones and the smaller steps are tenths. So if we asked to a child to round, say, 8.9 to the nearest whole number, they should be able to position 8.9 very precisely. That's 8.9 there and then see that the whole number that it's closest to is 9. And if your child's doing well at this, you could have a go with a number to two decimal places. So we could look at a number like 2.45. Well, 2.45, there's 2. And we'd move four steps for the point 0.4. And then the point 0.5, well, we'd have to imagine this tenth being cut into 10 teeny weeny parts for hundredths. So 2.45 would go here, halfway between 2.4 and 2.5. So we can see that 2.45 rounds to two because it's closer to it than it is to three. But we also see a key problem that children have here if they've been taught that numbers that end in five round up because there's all sorts of things can happen. They might just spot that that five is there and then they round up to three. Or they may look at the five and round the four up to a five and then we've got 2.5, so therefore it rounds to three. So be very careful of teaching children a shortcut rule that numbers that end in five round up because they don't always. And be aware of this problem of double rounding if you're going to go on to numbers with two decimal places and if you've got a child who's up for it and they're in the mood it's a great thing to do and to explore with them because if they can correctly round 2.45 to 2 as the nearest whole number that's fantastic they've got a really secure visual understanding of rounding that will stand them in great stead for the future I'll try and put a worksheet together on this in the next week or two It'll be available in the usual places for free download. Just check the About section on my YouTube channel for more information. So your takeaways from this video is that building children's capacity to deeply understand rounding is about making sure they have number lines in their heads which are showing the steps that you're rounding to, that they can position the number they're rounding on those number lines and that they can see which step marker it's closest to. They, they know that if it's halfway between two markers, you round up by convention. That's it for this series on number for seven to nine year olds. If you've managed to survive all 20 episodes, well done. I really, really hope this will be transformative for you in that you'll find you can work with every child under your care and help them to be really confident and creative with all the foundations of number in a way that will set them up beautifully for the future. One day I'd love there to be a way that you can take an assessment on all the ideas we've explored here to prove that you understand them and get a qualification. But then there's lots of things I'd love to do. If you know anyone who might be able to help me achieve some of these things, please get in touch. Everything I've done to date has been funded myself by the work that I've done working in schools. So the next series I'm going to create is number aged 9 to 11, where we'll be covering lovely topics like long multiplication and long division, six ways of dealing with the remainders of division, adding and subtracting fractions, multiplying fractions, and much, much more. I hope you'll join me for that, but if you want to stay with the younger children's age group, please come back and join me when I create the fourth and final series which is going to be about the applied aspects of number, such as shape and time and measure and so on. And I'm going to cover those topic by topic and cover the whole of the primary range in each video. If you like what I've done and you think it's useful, please do promote it and share it through your face-to-face -face networks and your social media networks. 
I don't have any money to promote these videos. I'd love to have some, but people don't find them on the internet because I've had no marketing money for search engine optimization or anything like that. So if you can help, please get in touch. That'd be great. Because obviously I'm not earning during lockdown. And for at least another year, I'm now committed to doing this instead of working in schools and earning. In the meantime, enjoy working on maths with the children you work with. Stay safe, stay well, and bye for now.